Welcome to another Godot recipe. There are many ways to handle cameras in 3D. First person, third person, fixed perspective. It all depends on what kind of game you're making. In this recipe, we'll look at how to make a camera that can orbit a target while remaining parallel to the ground. Let's get started. So here we have a camera set up, and then I have this window down here set to show us a preview of what the camera sees. Now let's say I wanted to tilt the camera up a bit to look at something, and then I want to rotate to the side. But when I tilt it back down, I'm now going to be misaligned. And that's usually something you don't want. You want the camera to stay level, always parallel with the ground, regardless of how you rotate or look up and down. You don't want that tilt to happen. And so the solution to this is something called a gimbal. A gimbal is a device that's designed to keep an object always level. Like they, you would use them on ships back in the old days to keep the to keep a, a flat surface level even as the ship is rocking in the waves. And so we're going to make a scene here and we're going to start with two spatial nodes. So a spatial and then another spatial as a child. And then I'm going to add the camera as a child of that. So the spatial, the outer one, is going to be our camera gimbal. And then the second one is going to be the inner gimbal. So we have the camera is a child of the inner gimbal. The inner gimbal is a child of the camera gimbal. And here's how that's going to work. Let's go back to preview here so we can see what the camera sees. Uh, I'm going to take the camera and I'm going to just set its transform the Z to about four so it's offset a little bit from, from where the center is. So we're looking towards the origin. So the way that the camera gimbal works is each of these nodes is responsible for one axis of rotation. And it's going to be its local mode. So I'm going to turn this to local mode here so that when we rotate, we're only rotating the node's local axes, not the global ones. So the outer node, the camera gimbal node, only rotates in Y. It is for us to rotate horizontally and look at the center. And we're never going to move this one on any other axis. Okay, The inner gimbal is going to rotate on its X and only on X. So it tilts up and down and so you see how its axes are changing. So now say I'm angling down a little bit. If I switch back to the outer one, the outer one, see how the axes are still level for this one. The outer one only rotates in Y. So now we're orbiting around whatever object we're looking at. And as long as we stick to that, then there's never going to be a problem with our camera not being level anymore. And you can see how it's always staying pointing at the same point, and it's always parallel with the ground. To control the gimbal, we're going to use the W, A, S, and D keys. So I've added input actions for those in the input map. And I've labeled them cam underscore. So we know these are the input actions for controlling the camera. And then I've also added zoom in and out for the up and down uh, mouse wheel. So now let's add a script to this. We're going to give it a variable here called rotation speed. It's going to control how fast the camera rotates while we're holding the keys down. And we'll start with pi over 2, which is 90 degrees. So that's 90 degrees per second is what that will be. And then we're going to, in our process function, we're going to check the keyboard input. And I'm going to do it this way. We're going to pass delta in along with it. I'm going to do it this way because we're going to also want to enable mouse control after we do this. So I'm just going to start with keyboard. So the function to get to check keyboard input needs to rotate those two spatials depending on which keys we pressed. So starting with, we're going to rotate the outer gimbal, that's the node that the script is attached to, around the Y axis. And so we're going to have a variable here called Y rotation. And then that's going to get set by which key we pressed. So 
So now we can rotate object local, and we want to rotate around the Y axis. And we want to rotate by that Y rotation times rotation speed times delta. And then for the inner gimbal, we want to rotate inner gimbal around its local x-axis. So we're going to do the same thing here. I'm going to copy and paste. Because I've copied and pasted the input code, just changed it to the other input keys, and we're rotating around x this time. And once we have that result, we're going to have the inner gimbal, and we're going to rotate object local, but this time around the x-axis. And then by the same amount, x rotation. And that should do it. Let's give it a try. So here's a test scene I've made with, I made a ground plane and I imported a model. So we have something to look at. And then I've instanced the camera gimbal into this scene. So when we play it, we can see that if I press the A and D keys, I will rotate around. And if I press W and S, my camera will pan up and down, left and right. So that's exactly what we want. We're staying centered on the center of the ship. But what you'll notice is that since we haven't put any limits on it, you can rotate too far and go completely upside down, which is probably not something that we want. We want to probably stop it around there and maybe stop it at the ground so that you can't rotate too far up and down. We'll fix that in our script. We'll, we're going to say inner gimbal, the, the rotation.x, we want to clamp that. And we want to clamp it between not quite 90 degrees. We don't want to go fully up to 90 degrees. So I'm going to say, let's say around 1.4 and then 0. And what that's going to do is it's going to make it so that when I pan up, that's as far up as I can go. And when I go down, I go straight down to the ground. Now, because that plane is there at the exact zero degrees here, we can't see the plane. So you might want to limit it to maybe a very, very small number, something like that, so that you can't go below the surface of the water or the ground or whatever you have. That's totally up to you. Now we have our rotation good. Now we need to work on the zoom. So for zooming, I'm going to have a maximum and a minimum zoom. So we can't zoom in too far or too far away. And we're going to have a zoom speed, how quickly the camera will zoom in and out as we scroll the wheel. And then this variable zoom is going to keep track of our current zoom level so we know what to change. So we're going to capture the zoom with unhandled input. And this is so that we will capture any GUI stuff before this. So you have, if you have a, a GUI overlay when you're scrolling in a scroll box or something like that, you're not also zooming the camera. And so we have two events here. We have the cam zoom in and the cam zoom out. And zoom in is going to take our zoom amount, and we're going to subtract zoom speed. And then zooming out is the opposite, where you just add the zoom speed. And then we set, and then we're going to clamp it between the minimum and the, and the maximum so it doesn't ever go outside those limits. So how are we going to zoom it? We're going to zoom it by changing the scale of the gimbal system. So scale equals vector 3, 1 times zoom. So we just zoom equally in all directions. Now what that's going to look like is this. Let's go up a little bit. Now, as I click the mouse, you can see the increment, right? It's going a little bit by each click of the mouse wheel. But it's a little bit, that makes for a little bit of a jerky effect, right? Especially when you're close by. So we can make that better by using Lerp to interpolate our zoom as it goes. We're going to do that in the process. We'll say scale equals, and we'll Lerp the scale up to what we wanted it to lerp to, which was that. 
by our zoom speed amount. And that's going to make for a much smoother zoom effect. You can even see that at the beginning when it zooms to the initial amount. And now we have a nice smooth zoom that we can use while we're rotating the camera around. So that's it. And we can stop there and say we're happy with the gimbal camera that we have. But some of you may want to also be able to control the camera with the mouse instead of the keys. So I'm going to show you how to do that as well. So we have a variable here called mouse control that we can set to true or false whether we want to be using the mouse or the keyboard. And then mouse sensitivity is going to be some amount that we can adjust to make the mouse more or less sensitive. And so now in our process here where we're getting the keyboard input, if mouse control is true, we want to not capture those keyboard events. And then we're going to go here into our unhandled input and we're going to check for some mouse events. So if mouse control is true and we get an input event mouse motion, then we know the mouse moved. So we need to capture the two axes of the mouse movement. Right, the x-axis of the mouse is the left and right. That's going to be our Y rotation of the gimbal and the Y axis of the mouse is going to be the up and down. So that's going to be our X rotation of our inner gimbal. So if event dot relative uh, dot X is not zero, then we must have moved the mouse side to side. So we're going to do rotate object, object local around the up. And we're going to rotate by event.relative.x how much we moved the mouse times the mouse sensitivity. And then the alternative is that we move the mouse up and down. So if we also check that, the y-axis of the mouse, then we're going to rotate the inner gimbal. I'm just going to go down here and grab that command. We're going to rotate that, that by event.relative dot y times mouse sensitivity. And now if we try this out, you'll see that we can move the mouse up and down, left and right, and control the camera. Now something else you'll notice is that if you move the mouse really quickly, you're going to have a problem with our clamp that's stopping the movement. So if I move up, you can see I'm stopping at the limits. If I move quickly, I can snap through there. And once I've done that, now I'm stuck there unless I move quickly again. And that's because our movement with the mouse can potentially be very, very high. This event.relative.y could be a large number. So we're rotating by a large angle, which since angles are, are circular, it's going to clamp us to the wrong side of the 90 degrees than we wanted. And so we can fix that by capping our amount of movement. So I'm going to make a variable here, right, y rotation. And it's going to clamp the event.relative.x dot y uh, between two values about there. Um, again, that's another one you can play with depending on your size of your screen and, and um, the sensitivity of your mouse. But this is good enough for a, an example. And then we're going to say y rotation times mouse sensitivity. And now that'll stop that from moving too quickly when we move the mouse really quickly. So one other thing I've added here before we wrap up is two flags here to invert the x and y axis. If you want the mouse movement to be the opposite of the direction it is now, which people often want for different uh, projects. So here what we're doing is we're just going to make a, a direction variable. We'll make it equal to 1 if invert x is true, otherwise we'll make it negative 1. And then that way we can multiply by direction in the rotation and it will rotate in the opposite direction that it was doing before. That'll do it for this camera gimbal tutorial. 
As I said at the beginning, this is only one of many possible camera control schemes, so keep an eye out on this channel for more tutorials on other methods of camera control. If you want a little bit more detail, I've linked in the description below to the text version of this tutorial on my Goodo Recipes website, where you can see a full version of the script where I've added in export properties for all of the different values so that you can have a nice interface over here in the inspector to turn on and off and set different properties. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. This tutorial is part of my new Godot Recipes website. The goal is to collect all the best tips and lessons to help make you a better Godot developer. If you like this video, I hope you'll go and check out the site. And make sure to hit subscribe so you'll be notified whenever I release new videos. Thanks for watching.